I was living in the Basque country for a little bit with a, uh, a girl that I've been dating for a while from Texas. Anyway, that, that didn't work out, but uh, I had a dream one night uh, and uh, I dreamt, uh, or at least I believed it very real, that uh, God, at least God told me that, that the wife, or the one for me, that I was not going to meet her on earth. Um, woke up the next day a little apprehensive about it, I don't know if that meant, uh, you know, I mean, uh, no time soon I was I going uh, was I going to be in space or anything like that and thought maybe that, that meant that you know, I was going to die or something. But uh, anyway, I, I, I flew back to, uh, uh, to uh, I took the actual train to Madrid and from Madrid I flew to Amsterdam and it was in Amsterdam that I met my wife. How that happened uh, was uh, just a matter of uh, coincidence and circumstances. It was, it was incredible because uh, the plane had already uh, been boarded. He was on a standby ticket and uh, the, f the plane was full, so they told him that uh, he had no seat, so he was a little disappointed. And uh, it was actually full, uh, but inside uh, uh, one of the passengers actually had a false passport, uh, no luggage, and $5,000. Dutch authority come, came into the plane and arrested uh, a lady with a false passport. And uh, Jean went to ask them what was going on, and they told them that uh, this lady got arrested. And then he told them, can I take our seat? Arguing and uh, hassled, but uh, somehow I managed to get on that seat. Uh, after arguing for so many hours, I, uh, I went to sleep a, a little bit. Uh, when the pilot announced that we were flying at 32,000 feet above sea level, I opened my eyes and I was in. I met my wife. There she was. Now I understood it. Everything kind of came in full circle. I understood that uh, what God had said to me that I was going to not meet her on Earth, and it was true. I met her up in space at 33,000 feet. Um, that's what I you know, kind of woke up and came to. And coincidentally, my wife being a stewardess uh, uh, at that time, she was actually uh, going around asking people if they wanted coffee or tea. And there she was in front of me, with those uh, beautiful eyes and that black hair and. And she's asking me, would you like coffee or tea? And I didn't understand it because she was asking me in a strange language. Um, it was Arabic, and I don't, I don't speak the Arabic. Um, and uh, uh, I said, uh, huh? I don't understand. And she said, uh, would you like coffee or tea? And I said, uh, hi, um, I, I'll take a Coke. He asked me f to, for a Coke, actually. And then he smoked a cigarette at the back. At that time, we were there. It was okay to smoke on a plane, and then uh, yeah, we had that little nice conversation, and uh, he went back to his seat. Uh, by the way, do you, do you, I you know I know it sounds strange, but uh, you and I are going to be married, uh, and we're going to have like kids, and, and we're going to be really happy. And she looked at me, and she said, "Okay," and she kept walking. I knew that the right then and there, I said, "Oh my, what a way to talk to someone," but. I knew that, that, that this was the, the moment and it couldn't let it escape from me and I was just overwhelmed with the, how it all came to be. And after that he handed a little note to one of the other flight attendants to, and asked her to hand it to me and he, he left his telephone number and, uh, and it says please call me whenever you get the chance whenever you're here in New York City. With this embarking, and I uh, just had to, uh, you know, kind of reaffirm what I said before because I knew that I came across as some kind of lunatic, uh, maybe a person not, that, not, not very mentally stable. Anyway, so what happened is I, I wrote a note uh, uh, with a small, uh, a short synopsis of, uh, I mean, it's a little redundancy, but a little, uh, a little note explaining, you know, what my dream was and why I was writing this note and uh, to let her know that uh, um, it would be great if she got to know me and understood where, where I was coming from, that I was just a normal person and actually a decent guy. So the next day, I think uh, she met some of my family members and uh, just uh, let her know and show her that I was just a grounded, uh, regular, you know, decent human being. And uh, we took the train to Grand Central and that's how we met him in Manhattan the first time. And then he um, took us, actually. He picked up us uh, with the, he, he drove to Long Island to pick up his sister for the Thanksgiving dinner. And it was a nice occasion. I got to meet all of his family and stuff like that. And it was really nice. 
uh, and we went dancing also I remember we had a really good time and since then we started uh, calling each other from everywhere from London from Amsterdam from Copenhagen we kept in touch on a, on a regular study basis and, and, uh, and then after a while we uh, we, you know, I met him on a thanks dinner, Thanksgiving dinner, and our wedding was almost on a uh, on a Thanksgiving, so it was, it was a year until we got. Little by little, I guess, um, maybe with a mixture of charm and, and truthfulness, it uh, it'll work out. Is mom behind me? <laughs> Now I'm married with the two children, Matthew and Evan. Matthew is 17 years old and Evan is 16. And I'm so proud of myself and John. I think we did good. It couldn't have been better.